awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, here we go, another day at the campsite here. This is awesome, it's so peaceful and quiet here. And uh, waking up in the morning, I love hearing uh, all the songbirds chirping away. They do that in the morning and they do that in the afternoon, late afternoon. But I love the peace and quiet and the songbirds and everything. And uh, having a cup of coffee and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so yeah, but anyway, uh, it is actually uh, kind of overcast out there today. It's, uh, that was why it might look dark in here somewhat, but yeah, overcast today. So uh, I'm not sure if it'll clear up or not. I haven't checked the weather, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's just us getting up in another day in the campsite. Right, girlies? Right, girls? Yeah. They got their balls and their toys and everything. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's uh, move on with something. Ciao. Well, it's another morning, another morning. And as, as many, many of you out there know, I have severe Crohn's disease. And mornings are my worst time of day. And it's, it's very annoying, annoying and a hard thing to deal with. But anyway, I thought you might find this interesting that uh, uh, almost two years ago now, I was using a product uh, for my Crohn's disease, my intestinal problem for that. And uh, I haven't used it for well over six months now. Um, but uh, what the product is, is it's, uh, it actually goes along with uh, the wild foraging in that in some sense, uh, because this product has been used for thousands of years by uh, indigenous people all over and even the pioneers and and whatnot you know uh been used for a long long time and uh for the intestinal problems of uh, many many sorts especially the severe ones so that's uh this product here it's called slippery elm bark powder it comes from the slippery elm tree and no other and it's uh they take the bark back and then they scrape the inner inner bark and that's where you get the slippery elm bark powder and basically, it's a it's an amazing product. It's a natural mucosoid, and a mucosoid is uh, basically what rebuilds the mucous membrane of your intestinal walls. So that naturally acts as a rebuilder for your mucous membrane of your intestinal walls. So it's been used uh, by the First Nations and everyone for many, many, probably thousands of years. I'm sure of that, um, and it's. Uh, something I was using along the way and I just um, I just kind of fell off using it because a lot of things like uh, things you do medicinally on a, on a regular routine basis uh, can be kind of boring and that in a sense so this is what I had to do with the um, with the slippery elm and why I dropped off what I was doing was I was taking quite the heaping teaspoon of uh, of the slippery elm bark and drop it into a really nice warm water and then you got to kind of blend it up really well um, and partly the warm water is to help it break down a little faster and, and mix with the water um, but also what happens is uh, when you mix it in water it becomes kind of slimy a bit and drinking something cold and slimy is not near as fun as drinking something that's warm and slimy <laughs> anyway um, so that's what I was doing, and here we go here. So that's blended. And now what we do here is we just uh, drink it down. Mm. Wow, it's not an unpleasant flavor or anything like that. It's just kind of uh, kind of slimy and kind of different and um, I don't know, just kind of unusual. Let's put it that way. But there's not a bad flavor at all. And uh, but it just could become as boring and routine and uh, just like any other kind of medical, uh, I guess, uh, a regular procedure you do all the time. <laughs> anyway, and then I finally realized that instead of doing it the uh, kind of monotonous and kind of almost gross kind of way of doing it, I thought I could just add it to 
all my meals, from pretty much any kind of my meals, all day long that I'm eating. And that's uh, basically what I'm doing. So now we got this scramlet going on here. One of my fam favorite scramlets. We got some uh, diced up red onion and garlic. We're going to throw that down in there. And, uh, you know, you can put in whatever you want, obviously. Put that down in there, put that aside. Spread that out a bit, yeah. And then, on top of that, we can just add some of this stuff right over top of that, like there. And now, if I do a little bit of that in every meal, I'll get kind of double what I generally have during the day, and I won't even notice it. And it'll be in my system, definitely um, a lot longer um, running through my system in a 24 hour period than doing it the other way. Anyway, there we go, there we go. I won't even notice that, so there we are. Let's flip this over and chow down on this. So there we go, a really succulent um, scramlet there. Um, with uh, slippery elm bark powder that I don't even notice is in there. Can't even taste it at all. That's fantastic. So that's what I'm going to do for now. I'm going to put it in my food. Mm. <laughs> yeah, because it was a product that's been used for um, thousands of years for um, severe intestinal problems, specifically the small intestine, and uh, regenerating, uh, regrowing your mucous membrane along your intestinal walls there. So yeah, that'll be uh, kind of helpful. Hopefully it'll uh, uh, ease things down a bit for me and uh, make it a little easier, but uh, we'll see what happens. But it's in all, all in all, it's a good product to have in your system. Slippery elm bark powder <laughs> works for you. Mm. Come on, girls. Let's go to the truck. Angel, to the truck. Get in the truck. We got to go somewhere. Angel, to the truck. Come on. Over here. Let's go. One up. Come on. There we go. Another one up. Okay, we got to take off. We got to go do something. Yeah. Yeah, we have to go put some more propane in this new tank, the big one, and in this one, the back one here as well. So, there we go. Yeah, so uh, that uh, slippery elm thing... Uh, that actually goes along with the uh, wild forest f foraging aspect of my channel uh, and my life and the things I do there. Um, because actually for eons, it was uh, wild foraged by everyone that wanted it or needed it. And it was used quite often and, uh, and a lot. Um, but now you can go down to uh, any natural food store, like uh, Heaven on Earth is where I got mine, and uh, pick it up by bulk and that. So... Uh, but yeah, in the old days it was wild forged and now it's, uh, you know, you can pick it up in packages, but uh, it's still basically the same thing. It's an organic uh, wild product that's uh, there to help you uh, medicinally for any of your IBDs or IBS um, and any int severe t intestinal problem you have. So now let's get the heck out of here and go get the propane. Here I come. There we are. We are back. We are back. We are back home at the campsite. Come on, girls. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Go to, go to the house. Get upstairs. Get up. Hurry up. Get up. Come on. Get up. Everybody up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Well, there was a number of people out there that uh, asked the question, uh, isn't it dangerous to run around with a big, large propane tank in the back of your truck? Isn't it dangerous and explosive? And uh, basically the short answer is no, it's not, it's not. Now, uh, the uh, containers and uh, canisters that are uh, built for propane are a minimum of two or three times stronger than they need to be for the product. Um, it is uh, kept in a pr pressurized state and uh, it's uh, actually a liquid in there. And then uh, when you burn it off through the engine and that, it's. Uh, a gas you're burning off the gas from the liquid anyway no they're very uh they're safe and they're a lot safer than gasoline actually uh first of all for as far as containers go 
the gasoline tanks in most vehicles are not that strong at all. They're just adequate enough to pack that gasoline around while you drive everywhere all over the place. But they can be uh, quite easily punctured uh, with minimal impact. And, um, you know, uh, whereas these can take a lot more beating or whatever um, and stuff like that. But this is, uh, propane is a lot safer than gasoline. And also gasoline is a lot more volatile than propane. And uh, um, uh, propane will disperse quicker in the air and that. But uh, there's actually more problems and more uh, accidents with gasoline ever than there is with propane. So basically what I've been told by the expert is uh, when you get a brand new uh, propane tank like this, brand spanking new, it's, there's nothing in it except air, air. And when you start filling it up, um, the propane creates pressure on its own, but it also creates pressure on the air pressure in there, and which creates more pressure. A bee just went by my face. Wow, it's springtime. Anyway, um, so what he said was when you have a brand new tank, what you do is you fill it up uh, uh, a little ways. You never fill it up uh, full the first time around. You fill it up a little ways, like, I don't know how much this will take, but let's say you put in 50 bucks worth of propane, and then what you got to do is you got to, uh, once you come home and park, you got to open the bleeder valve there, the 80% valve, and um, let um, the air pressure out. Um, and you got to leave it open for 10 to 15 minutes, apparently. And it uh, bleeds off all the air pressure in there and um, gives more space and, uh, and uh, less pressure on the, um, more space for the propane and less pressure on the propane. Um, so that uh, there's a proper pressure in the tank uh, when running it for uh, running the propane into your engine so there's no uh, there's no problem with uh, you know air locks or anything like that I don't understand the whole system but that's what he told me so we have put a certain amount of fuel in this tank for the second time and uh, we've uh, bled it off uh, the one evening and that but basically you can't see it because it this 80 percent valve because it's hiding behind this hose i can barely see it myself but then apparently you open that and let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes and it'll bleed off the air pressure that's in there um, um and very very little of the propane gas kind of thing but all the air pressure will come out and when i come back later um it's actually shut itself off because the air pressure is all out and it's um, um, stabilized basically so that's what we're supposed to do so that's what I'm going to do for the second time leave this out for 10 to 15 minutes and then uh, we have to do that a third time and then uh, apparently then we can just fill the tank after that so there we go well I hope you enjoyed the information about the propane tank and the system itself um, I, I found it fascinating and interesting and I hope you enjoyed the uh, uh, bit on the uh, Slippery Elm as a, uh, a part of the wild foraging part of things in some way, but uh, as a medicinal health for your, for your uh, intestines and everything from a natural point of view, a natural product to heal your body um, instead of medications and stuff that probably don't. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed the whole, the whole uh, episode and uh, we'll catch you in the next clip, I guess. Now we got, we got to go walk the dogs or something. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Ciao for now. The parrot guy decided to stop by today and uh, say hi, and he was admiring my little tiny house and camper in here. They thought it was really good and wonderful, and uh, my dogs are going crazy because of it. Uh, so is your bird, uh, what's he say? He says hello. He says goodbye. Goodbye. He, he, sa he says, uh, pretty boy Mateo, oh, are you a lion? <laughs> He's a 20-year-old Moroccan cockatoo. Oh, okay, cockatoo, okay. Yep. Huh? Okay, Say not hello. a parrot, not a parrot, huh? Say hello. Well, he's from the parrot family. Okay, yes, right? of course, yeah. Huh? Say hello. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> had, had, had to fertilize the ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> huh? Say hello. Hello. There you go. Hello. Hello. Hey, hello. I heard him saying goodbye all the way down yep. there. Yeah. He every, said goodbye. Every campsite he passed, it was yeah. goodbye, yeah. goodbye. goodbye. Yeah, huh? he's a beautiful bird. You know you're on TV, right? Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's, he's shy like my dogs. Huh? huh? Oh, pretty boy. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Are you a lion? <laughs> that's a lion. Yeah.
Okay. <laughs> yeah. You think that's funny, hey? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, awesome. Awesome deal. So well, good to that. good to run into you. You just put it on on YouTube. Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's on my channel here. Yeah. Oh, right on. Yeah. I'll make sure I watch it. <laughs> okay. Perfect, eh? Ciao for now. Well, that was Ralph the Cockatoo guy, just kind of wandering around through the campsite and then uh, visiting everybody. That was really cool. That was a really beautiful bird he had. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Anyway, we'll talk to you soon. Ciao. <laughs> oh, just a minute. There's just one more thing I wanted to show you. I'm going to have to get a brand new door for my uh, little tiny house here because my door is falling apart here. Check it out. So what's going on there is the bottom's falling off there like that. See how much that's come off? It should be way up there, up over that. But what I've noticed with all the wood that's falling out, it's all kind of black and charred, like it got burnt. So it's almost like the uh, flash explosion and the, even the ensuing fire that was down in around the corner here might have charred and burnt the wood inside, but it didn't start it on fire, luckily. So I'm uh, just thinking we're lucky for that because that didn't happen. But this is coming apart, and I, now I either have to find a replacement for it, similar door from a RV as a replacement, or just build my own wooden door that would uh, go with the tiny cabin aspect of the tiny house here. Um, that would actually look a lot better. It would look more rustic like a tiny cabin but uh, either way I gotta replace this door somehow and uh, I think the simplest and fastest way is to just get another camper door but because uh, it'll take me a lot longer to build my own door but we'll see anyway just thought you'd find that fascinating my door is falling apart that's just another thing I have to replace another expense and everything so we have to do that as well anyway I guess we'll just say ciao for now